UDO Super 6. We have the envelopes right over here. They're both ADSR envelopes, envelopes one and two. Envelope one is the envelope that's most likely to be directed to a number of places. Envelope two uh, largely can just be directed to the amplitude of the sound, or it also can be uh, used to control the filter. We're going to start with envelope one and have it control the filter. As we undoubtedly know, the envelope is designed to create a single waveform that uh, implements changes over time, and it has an attack, which is how long it takes for uh, the voltage to go from zero to the highest voltage it's going to be, the decay, which is the time it takes to go from the highest voltage to zero, or, to the sustain level, which is a steady voltage that you can place anywhere in the range of voltage so that the sound is sustained as long as the key is held at that voltage. And then finally we have release, which is how long it takes whatever voltage you're at to go to zero after you've released the key. And that is an envelope in case anyone is wondering. Okay, <laughs> so let us, I have these set to really uh, basic non-usable or usable, but I have these set to just really bland settings. Keep in mind that while we're using the envelope one to control the filter, uh, there are outcomes that are going to be affected by envelope two because envelope two is still controlling the overall amplitude of everything that's going on. So we may not necessarily hear the exact thing we would hear in envelope one as it's affecting the filter because envelope two, we're not using both simultaneous, simultaneously, but I might try just in case to show you how that's happening, but you probably know. Okay, so let us hear envelope one controlling the filter. Keep in mind, we have a switch here that you can't see. Oh, uh, we have a switch here that allows you to select which envelopes control the filter, whether that is envelope one, envelope two, or both together. We're gonna switch, switch this to envelope one so that uh, we're just hearing what envelope one is doing so we can explore the functionality present in envelope one. And now we finally get to sound. And of course, there is no indication that anything is going on because our filter is all the way open and we merely have the most blocky sustain level setting present on envelope one. So let's change that. Let's bring up the envelope. give you some really high attack and decay settings so we can hear what happens. Even higher, all the way to 10. So you definitely have some time uh, <laughs> to work with there. There's That's a decent length. And of course the release is not going to matter unless we have the release up on envelope two. So let's do that. So that is our envelope doing what envelope, envelopes. We also have the H slider, which stands for hold, but it also could be described as delay. It delays how long the envelope takes to kick in. So we'll set an envelope setting here and play a chord. 
whoops oh well <laughs> we have our hold to zero so obviously it's going to start immediately let's put it all the way up so we can hear how much delay we can implement which is a decent amount of delay let's do halfway down And that is a nice function if you would like to delay the changes that are going to happen in your sound. So that's our hold slider. And let us talk about key track uh, <laughs> because that's really weird. I, I don't know that I've ever seen this on a synthesizer before. Now, I'm sure someone's going to list off the eight synthesizers that also have it. But for me, this is a new experience. What KeyTrack does is it does the same thing that uh, KeyTrack does on the VCF, which is it uses the voltages that come from the keys to define the degree to which the envelope affects the sound. Uh, which is really cool because you might know on some instruments like a piano, for example, uh, the low notes will hold longer than the high notes. So uh, basically, the length of the envelope is affected by the, the key that you press and the frequency range that that key represents, which is to say lower keys will be longer and higher keys will be shorter. Uh, a lot of instruments beyond piano actually act that way as well. So let us have a demonstration of that. I'm going to switch it on and give us an envelope here. Okay, let's see. Uh, here's a very low note. Here's a very high note. Okay, here's a low note. And here's a high note. As you can tell, those are at uh, different lengths. Let's turn it all the way up. So yeah, that is an interesting effect. And of course you could use it uh, in combination with the key track and the filter. So lower notes are longer and darker and higher notes are shorter and brighter. So that is very interesting and unique. <laughs> 